So then we have the art of photography. We have um, the Impressionist movement, coined um, by Claude Monet uh, in this painting, Impressions, Sunrise, um, where by this time we've seen how painting and photography have kind of were born together in a way and how they go back and forth and one influences the other, one informs the other, um, and, and slowly the, the lines blur. People still wonder, is photography an art or is it a tool? Uh, many people have understood it as this sort of art craft, uh, something that could be learned and mastered, but other people were also recognizing it as an expressive tool in fine art. With Impressionism, um, we have the birth of pictorialism, which is a sort of photo photographic version of Impressionism. Impressionism was an exploration, recognizing that painting no longer was bound to being a representational visual art. Uh, it no longer had to be um, committed to being the portrait, being an accurate rep representation. And so now artists were able to explore uh, sunlight. It was all about light. We have photography that, ex that sort of mechanically and chemically explains properties of light. And so painters now break light away from the actual object being looked at. They're able to show a scene without actually depicting every detail as in a photograph. Painting could get away from that and so now we have brush strokes and sunlight and really what we now have is the representation of the artist's experience or some kind of experience with the image that's able to take the viewer out of what's being shown and into some other uh, higher experience. And now we have Alfred Stieglitz who takes this to heart with photography and recognizes that with photography it takes extreme skill but it's also a skill that can be learned and and with the skill combined with an artistic intuition uh, that photography should be claimed as an art form. So he's the one, first one to exhibit photography and sculpture together in one area uh, called his gallery gallery 291 in New York um, and was very fundamental man to establish a lot of photographer historic photography um, the the students of photography who make a name and really represent photography as we know it We can look at, we can essentially break down photography into three distinct categories where um, we have photography that is combined with emotion or photographs from the heart and the head. Um, we have, in other words, fine art photography, but also including documentary photography. So we have this first, first category is photography with the heart, the, the experience of the photographer which is fine art photography. We have photography from the mind, which is factual ph photographs, things that represent a document or an element of truth or a piece of evidence to something's existence. Um, and we have photographers who stand firm in that philosophy. And then we have the third, which is commercial photography. It's an image that's made uh, under the direction of someone who has a goal in mind um, and most often it's it has to do with selling something or, or photography is advertisement and all of these photography is a way of communicating an idea um, and then the different sections are different philosophies of, of applying f photography as that communicative tool um, we can track the documentary type of photography with Daguerre and some of the movements that resulted. It's the highly detailed, accurate um, photography used as a tool to document history and people, uh, starting with art, uh, stills, portraits, landscapes, and architecture, and moving into um, some of the more artistic type portraits and things like that to, that seem to, to document. And then with um, Talbot, we see this philosophy of, of intuition as well as skill 
where um, we can we can pair it with the more pictorialist type photography that's more expressive, more artistic. It's less about what is in the photograph and more about what the idea is or what the feeling is or mood or um, sort of the experience or a, a opinion of the photographer. And then we see the constructed or the manipulated image with Bayard, the ones that question photography as this essential tool for truth. Um, and so we can track those three trains of thought throughout the, the development of, of history. And with this course, it focuses mainly on fine art, but it compares documentary and commercial um, as ways of, of showing different sides of the use of photography and, and how it's developed over time. So we have um, pictorialism, a comparison of the Impressionist paintings and um, Stiglitz horses um, called the terminal, where atmosphere, weather, light, dark, time of day, uh, expression of people tell a story of what's going on. Here we have Stieglitz's equivalent series where he um, makes a photograph the expression of his inner experience. And the, compared with the photograph of his lover Georgia on the right, um, he, he sees these two photographs as the same, especially on the left. These are his emotional expressions, his experiences, and, and meant to not be related with what's what it's showing but more with the emotion of what's going on and what he's feeling. Gertrude Casabier uh, of the pictorialist style shooting at home uh, with children, shooting family um, because this is what is acceptable accessible to women at the time. Um, women weren't allowed into art academies um, and they certainly weren't hired uh, for commercial portraits because most, let's just put it straight up at this time, uh, women were seen as, as people who needed to be at home to care for the family, to care for the home, to care for the husband. Um, they, thought, they were thought of as um, vulnerable creatures in a way that sometimes is, is flattering but at other times is oppressive. And so photography for women um, really allowed them expression beyond uh, their home life. Laura Gilpin, another photographer in, in shooting in California. And Edward Steichen, a student of Stiglitz using the pictorialist style. And Steichen advances the pictorialist style uh, into the commercial photography world where he uses this style, this sort of expressive artistic uh, way of, of photographing uh, into the commercial world in magazines and fashion, um, knowing how to use emotion as a way to sell a product. So he understood the language of photography in, in a way to advance it into commercial photography as a way to make money for photographers and as well as uh, sell a product for a company. <laughs> 